started. We're recording the uh, this session. So uh, I started my day shoveling very heavy snow. <laughs> so my brain is uh, working very efficiently. I'm thinking it's uh, full of blood, and that's uh, that's a good thing. Um, so uh, what I what I'm going to do today is I'm going to review <clears throat> some of the topics, some of the areas in which, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> in which uh, artificial intelligence is making its uh, its presence felt uh, in many um, in many uh, activities, businesses, our personal life. And, and you know that too, because I'm sure this news is not, uh, has made it around the world. And so in order to, uh, rather than just talk at you, I've prepared a PowerPoint presentation. I have about 20 slides and I'll go through some of the areas in which AI is, is currently being used. Um, and I want you to consider those uh, when you when you uh, make your present you make your uh, presentation when you think about the topic that you want to cover. Uh, so um, I'll go through that. I'll go through it uh, slowly, um, and then afterwards, um, I'll be happy to take some questions from you. All right. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to uh, share the screen with my PowerPoint. I'll give you the full screen. There we go. Let me just clear up my screen. All right. So the topic of this year's uh, Global Youth Challenge is AI and the future of the world. And uh, just to review with you, the competition dates, the competition dates, um, they'll be in about 10 weeks time. So it'll be March the 22nd in 10 weeks time. For the uh, the senior group, the sixteen to eighteen year olds, you'll be uh, you'll be competing um, for the finals on March the twenty second. That's a Saturday, and then for the junior group, the thirteen to fifteen uh, age group, that will be the following day um, here in Canada. That's uh, March the twenty third. Um, we've assembled uh, some uh, outstanding judges. Every year, the competition has uh, amazing judges from universities. And this year, I'm happy to, to say that uh, in Canada, we have the University of Waterloo and Brock University, both based here in Ontario. From the United States, we have the very prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. MIT, you may or may not know, was very much involved early on back in the 80s in the development of artificial intelligence, particularly in the area of vision and natural language development. And from China, the uh, Zhejiang, I think I'm pronouncing that for my Chinese uh, friends out there, Zhejiang University, very prestigious. And uh, for the, uh, we, we'll, we've invited a one of the winners, past winners of the Global Youth Challenge, Grace Yu, uh, from 2022. She'll be uh, one of the judges, I believe, in the junior section. Uh, so, as you know, we're accepting two kinds of uh, entries. One of them uh, could be a an essay, 300 up to 500 word essay, plus a three-minute recorded speech, a presentation uh, based on your essay. Now, next weekend, I will be doing another workshop, another what we call a master workshop with you, and I'll be going over um, presentations, uh, how to structure a, a strong, powerful essay. So you may be familiar with this already. If you're, if you're um, in high school, you'll know that writing essays is an important part of every course. And um, so I'll, I'll review um, how to write an essay, how to structure it. Uh, if you're more visually oriented as I am, um, I would have preferred if I was a competing here to do an artwork. So that could be a poster. It could be a collage. And I'll talk more about that next week. It could be a painting. It could be a drawing. Some visual uh, representation of, of what you feel uh, AI and the future of our world uh, might look like and could be like. And that also requires a three-minute recorded speech. Now, I first became involved with artificial intelligence back in 1986, almost 40 years ago. And I had left teaching for a period of about five or six years because I'd always been interested in 
filmmaking and television and filming cam with cameras. And so I had the opportunity to, uh, to um, develop a, a career in uh, the media. And um, I was working in Toronto for an educational television network called TV Ontario. And I'd been making some documentary films with them. And they approached me and asked me, would I be interested in doing a, a four part television series about artificial intelligence? And I'd never really heard about it. Now, I have a picture there of a Mac Plus. That, that was the first computer that I had. I bought it in 1985. It had a floppy disk. Uh, it came with a, um, a, a dot matrix printer and I paid $5,200 in 1986. 5,200 Canadian dollars was a lot of money. Uh, but that, uh, that was my first computer. And with that computer, I was uh, able to start working on um, developing a television series. We called it Fulfilling the Dream. It was four half hour programs. And I have a little clip that I wanna show you from one of the programs that dealt with, uh, that dealt with the development of vision. So I'm gonna stop this share. I'm going to open up my video. Now, this video uh, was made in 1986, and so uh, it was shot on videotape. We do not have the original videotapes of this show. It's such a long time ago. Uh, I had um, a VHS, a very low quality VHS copy that I had made at that time. From it, I have a DVD copy. And um, what I did to, for, to present this clip is I, is I projected this on a screen and I filmed it on my, my iPhone. And so it, the quality, I'm sorry, it could be much, much better, but um, I'll just set it up. Um, in 1985, we were looking at autonomous vehicles. What was AI able to do in terms of allowing a vehicle to drive on a road or a path and not to run into anything? In other words, we're talking vision, computer vision. How could a computer calculate um, the, the, the path for a vehicle to travel? Of course, now we have Tesla. We have self-driving cars. They're not totally safe. There are reports of accidents with them. But I was able in 1985 to look at some of the very first work that was being done. And it was being done in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Carnegie Mellon University. And the research there was being led by a Japanese um, artificial intelligence expert, Takeo Kanadi. So you're going to see him and you're going to see the first, the very first use of vision capability on a vehicle. And that'll be followed with a robot. Neil Kennedy heads the research there. He asked the question, now what is the shape of this object? And people would say, well, it's a box. This is exactly the demonstration of the difficulty of vision problem. Image is two dimensional, whereas scene is three dimensional and image has lost the depth of information. So somehow you have to come up with the theory or a procedure to recover the three-dimensional information. And that is exactly the difficulty that we are facing every day. And human is somehow solving that problem. And yet uh, we don't know how to do it by machine. Terrogator must learn the machine equivalent of crawling before it can walk and then recognize the boundaries of its world. That's a problem every human being solves in some way. Terrogator uses color. This is the digitized image that the computer is going to process. And the computer program analyzes the color component to classify road versus non-road region. So we are not detecting edges. We are classifying the color. Now the color changes, so the system tracks the change of color. The detected road region is matched against the map that the vehicle knows beforehand to locate 
its position in the map. The location of the vehicle relative to the map is sent to a module called pilot, which calculates the appropriate path to turn this intersection. And that path is sent to another module called Elm, which actually generates the individual motion command that the interrogator should execute. And those commands are sent by a radio link to the interrogator, and the interrogator begins to turn. This research holds great promise for working in hazardous environments, both civil and military, where human health and human lives may be at stake. Self-navigating systems in cars of the future could assist human drivers and make our roads safer. A lot has happened in artificial intelligence during the two decades since Shaky the robot acquired sight. Something is lacking my path. Today's powerful computer systems will allow Shaky's offspring, Flaky, to achieve much more. But he's a slow learner. Building a... Okay. So that's... Uh, uh, we went on uh, in that particular program to look at some of the early robots. They didn't look like humans the way robot we expect robots to look today. They're basically computers on wheels. Uh, but a lot of this research um, has, uh, has, of course, you know, moved very, very rapidly over the last 40 years. So looking at vision, t a vision uh, the capabilities uh, the, of, of a car to drive itself, the uses of robots, maybe uh, one of the topics you might be interested in. Someone has sent me a chat, and I just want to see what that is. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, let me uh, get rid of... Uh, just a second, let me get rid of that video and then I'll put my PowerPoint up and we'll carry on. Okay, so let's uh, let's carry on with my PowerPoint. So, if one goes onto the internet, and by the way, the internet, my, my television series was produced in 1986. Uh, the internet became uh, available here in Canada in about 1990. It was a dial-up. It used the telephone lines. You couldn't do Google searching that did not exist. Basically, we've communicated in text with each other <coughs> using the uh, using uh, the internet. So when I prepared this series, uh, I had to do a lot of research if I was going to make a, a two hour a two hours worth of artificial intelligence uh, content. We had an opportunity in that show to interview some of the great pioneers. So um, that series contains people from Yale University, Stanford University in San Francisco, um, the, uh, the University of British Columbia in Toronto, University of Toronto, Western University. Uh, we went to a University of California in Berkeley. We went to MIT many times, Carnegie Mellon. We looked at how AI was going to be used in, uh, in education, how it was going to be used uh, by social media, how it could be used by healthcare. We went to uh, look at uh, researchers who were trying to find cures for cancer using artificial intelligence. And we'll talk a bit more about that. How artificial intelligence can be used in the life sciences, how artificial intelligence could be used in business, how artificial intelligence can be used in law and in politics, how artificial intelligence can be used in visual media, in music, in film, in art, and particularly the one of the things that started the research into AI was its use for military applications. That role, that autonomous vehicle you saw driving, all of that research was being funded by the American military. They wanted to be able to drive tanks and military vehicles using artificial intelligence and not put people in those vehicles. So uh, military applications has been 
continues to be, and I think in the future will continue to be a very important use of artificial intelligence. Some of you may want to consider that when you, uh, when you develop your program. And of course, AI in security. So these are some of the areas I'm going to cover, not all of them, but I'm going to go into some detail uh, with some of these areas. We all know chat GPT, education and AI. How is that going to change our world? It's already, as you know, changing our world. It's having a profound effect. Having chat GPT and I use it, and I'm sure you all use it at some form, uh, it's like having a personal assistance that you can send out to do some work for you, conduct worldwide research. It can go through university libraries without you ever leaving your seat. It can go online and search universal databases to bring all that material together for you. It's very, very useful. The great advantage of ChatGPT is what we call triangulation bringing together different sources of information, different ideas that are that have been put out there as data uh, uh, to, to test out a theory that you may have. Or maybe uh, you can inquire uh, ChatBT to, to generate some new ideas, some new insights, some new arguments that you can use uh, on your behalf. So it's very, very useful. Uh, it's based on deep um, um, data input, Masses and masses amounts of data, not all of it up to date. And so that's one of the shortcomings of ChatGPT. Of course, there are disadvantages to it. Uh, biased information can be can be put into the, the, the ChatGPT database. Uh, and it can be used for plagiarism purposes. And I'm sure you've all been made aware uh, not to use ChatGPT to do all of your work for you. It's a resource. It's a uh, it's a source of information, but it's it, it should not be relied upon to do your writing for you. You need to use your brain, not the computer. Google, just before Christmas, announced it will come out with its own version of uh, ChatGPT called Gemini. And um, I went online. There was a, a little bit of information, not very much right now. But uh, at the close of 2023, Google announced that it was going to launch its uh, Gemini, an artificial intelligence um, that it claims will outperform ChatGPT. In what way? Well, um, it will understand text. It will understand audio. It will understand video. It will assess images. It can, uh, it can modify computer code. It can do... It's multimodal. It has many, many functions. According to Google, this new model uh, displays advanced reasoning. It can even, if they suggest, mark, look at and mark your homework for you, give you feedback on your own writing. Uh, there, um, I was not able to download a link to show you the, the promotional video, but there is one out there. Uh, so you can check it out. Uh, go search for Google's Gemini. And maybe uh, maybe you want to uh, delve into how these kinds of um, AI and education models are going to impact life, our life in the future. This is a little more information from Google. I'll let you read those. Google's claiming that it's going to be far more powerful than ChatGPT. But there is a warning at the bottom here. It, um, they do admit that in their test models, they have been getting some false answers and what, or what they call hallucinations, wrong information or generated information that's just not true. Let's talk about AI and social media. This is a particular area that I'm interested in, um, bots. Uh, AI robots. If you've ever gone on to a website uh, to find a, a company website and you want to get more information from that company, mm -hmm. quite often a box will appear, someone you can chat with. Are you actually chatting when you're texting? Are you actually chatting with a human being? Are you chatting with a, with a computer? Most likely you're not chatting with a human being. Most likely you are chatting with an AI. Uh, program. Um, 
two of them that I find really interesting. One of them is called LEQ, and one of them is called Call Annie. You can go online and and and, and explore these, but I want to talk a little bit about AI and social media. Um, LEQ can become a companion for humans. Imagine someone who lives alone, someone perhaps elderly who can use a computer, someone who's not mobile and cannot really leave their home or their rooms often um, and don't, don't have a very wide social circle. Could they become friends with a computer? Yes, of course they could. LEQ is an example. LEQ can tell you jokes, can play some of your favorite music. It can give you uh, inspirational quotes. Uh, it can take you on tours uh, of cities and museums. It can help you to exercise. It can, uh, it's like having a companion with you on screen. It can, it can inquire into your, into your health. If you're taking medications, uh, if you have health issues, it can give you reminders. It's time to take your pill, baby. It's time to take, it's time to do some exercise, Johnny. Time to drink some water, Mary. How many glasses have you had today? These are, uh, these are very, very useful social uh, media interactions that we can have. It can host video calls, it can call your contacts, it can make contact with your, your family, your friends. It can even let your doctor know that there is an emergency. Okay, it, 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 it becomes almost like a human being in your home with you. The average user of LEQ uses it more than 30 times a day. Even six months after receiving it, and it's more and, and more than 90% of, of reports uh, from the users say that it has lowered their levels of loneliness. I think we're going to see more and more use of robots. We're certainly seeing them in manufacturing, but we're going to see a lot more use of robots uh, as companions for people who cannot find human companions or want to have an additional companion that is AI based. So you may want to consider this in your in your project. AI and healthcare. We've all just come through uh, a pandemic, COVID-19, took the world uh, by the throat. How is it that we were able to develop a COVID, the world was able to develop a COVID a vaccine so rapidly, incredible, faster than any other major vaccine had ever been developed? Well, it was done with the help of AI because AI allowed the, the, uh, the researchers to test out all kinds of combinations of compounds against that, that particular virus. Uh, hundreds of millions of tests were done, far more than, human, than humans could have possibly done in such a short time. I believe that the vaccine uh, came out within, within a year of the, uh, of the pandemic being uh, uh, starting. So in the near future, experts believe that AI will be able to make a comprehensive assessment of, of a patient's health and illnesses based on hundreds of thousands of bits of medical data and then recommend suitable treatments. You think when you go to the doctor, you give blood, you give various samples. Uh, if you have cancers, they'll take biopsies, pieces of tissue. All of that has got to be diagnosed and examined and the right kinds of treatment that there are thousands and thousands of ways uh, diseases can be treated uh, using various um, uh, kinds of prescriptions. Some can be very dangerous for your health. And so AI is allowing researchers to test out um, in real time without using patients or putting patients at risk, uh, all these new kinds of uh, uh, medications. AI could analyze the complex data of a patient's genetics. If they, if they knew your genes, uh, they could uh, assess those, determine the kinds, the right kinds of medications you could have, uh, the kinds of diagnostic tests that you should have. Uh, maybe they will consider your lifestyle, your weight. Do you smoke? Do you drink? Where do you live? The kinds of foods you eat could assess all of that data far, far faster and maybe more efficiently than, than a human being could possibly do. And those patterns will predict future health. Maybe with this kind of technology, 
<laughs> human beings will be able to live with to what one people, what some people feel will be 150 years. There is there no reason why human beings could not live to be 150 years old with organ transplants, with the kinds of treatments we'll, we'll, we're de currently developing for all kinds of diseases, for our ability to diagnose diseases before they even uh, appear in the body, possibly. And so uh, AI and the impact on our world in the future could be very profound. Not only that, but think about the costs that AI will save, the, the pressures uh, that's put on caregivers, all the doctors, the times, the nurses, the hospitals, all the money that's expended to have human beings do all of this work when we could be using artificial intelligence. This is a slide uh, that talks about more of the vaccines that are being developed by using artificial intelligence research. Um, there is a, uh, a, another, uh, another very, very dangerous disease uh, called monkeypox. Monkeypox has taken the lives of tens of thousands of people, particularly in Africa, but it's made its way outside of Africa. And a, uh, vaccines have been developed that are, uh, that are able to kill that virus. Would have taken years and years to do that but AI has come up with uh, some vaccines and continuing to improve the COVID vaccines as well. This is a graph of just how expensive uh, healthcare is uh, to, uh, to every nation's uh, gross uh, domestic product. And uh, AI uh, can save billions and billions of dollars. My chart here begins in 1974, and you can see the costs of healthcare just continues to go up and up and up and up and up. It takes a huge percentage of every nation's um, economy. AI can help that. AI could deliver services to underserviced areas that don't have doctors. AI technology can do the examinations, can recommend the treatments, for patients without having uh, uh, doctors uh, and nurses all over the country. We know that's just not possible. Um, and care workers are over are overburdened here in Canada. Uh, nurses and doctors are leaving the profession. They are just, there's just too much work for them. They are stressed, they are overworked, and um, less and less people wanna go into the healthcare because it's so stressful. Artificial intelligence, can help solve that problem. Maybe you want to include some of this when you consider artificial intelligence and the future of our world. If any of you are studying zoology or bio botany, um, maybe marine biology, microbiology, entomology, these are all what we call the life sciences. Life science is the study of living things and living processes. AI is making tremendous impacts in these fields. It's an area that you may want to uh, uh, look at. There's a lot of information on the internet. Artificial intelligence helps us understand the consequences of our actions uh, and can help us prevent damage to our environment. Projects that address environmental sustainability there are so many of them. Computer vision is helping ecologists to detect plant diseases. AI, satellite imagery and AI working together are investigating the impact we're making on the planet. We can't fly over, uh, humans cannot fly over the planet, the oceans, the forests, the mountains to detect what's going on. But artificial intelligence can analyze satellite imagery and determine erosion where problems may be uh, that need to be solved. I have uh, several episodes in my series looking at that very use of satellite imagery. A lot of that work was done in British Columbia, uh, Canada, and uh, continues to be done there as well. AI could help us to determine where should we place our energy creating resources where fossil fuels uh, uh, have had their day. Uh, they won't be with us forever. Fossil fuels pollute the planet. We need to look at wind. We need to look at solar. We need look to look at tidal. We need to look at all the other ways we can generate power, electricity for our planet. 
uh, that is uh, that will not uh, pollute, that will not promote climate change and global warming. How do we find those best the best places to place those? Artificial intelligence can determine uh, over over time where the wind is best, where the sun shines longest, where the highest tides are. I looked at the impact of artificial intelligence in agriculture and food production. There is so much information on the internet and I advise you to uh, include some of that insight. One of the interesting projects that I looked at was in America is a project, an AI based project called Betsy. Uh, Betsy stands for the Bovine Expert Tracking and Surveillance Program. Uh, Betsy is also a common name that people call cows. Bovine is a, is the uh, our, is the uh, scientific name for a cow. Uh, there is a farmer who has one hundred cows. Uh, she has to. It's a woman. She uses artificial intelligence to keep an eye on each one of her cows. Artificial intelligence has been able to identify each of the cows by their distinct markings and colors. So every cow has a number. This is cow 1063. This is cow 658. And what does AI do? AI watches the 100 cows for their health using cameras to sense their heat. Are they sick? Are they giving off heat? Uh, is that cow pregnant? Is the cow showing growing in its, its its abdomen is growing in size? Is the abdomen growing because the cow has developed some kind of disease, a bloat, stomach is expanding, it has gas? Uh, this AI can watch 100 cows when they're in the barn and we're outside on their in their pens, know each cow, determine its health, determine its pregnancy. Uh, uh, in a way that uh, a human being could never possibly do that. You can't go around with a thermo thermo thermometer and check the heat of your cows. Uh, you can't touch all your cows. Uh, even determining which cow is which, a human being cannot memorize the identities of 100 cows. Artificial intelligence, vision uh, can do that. So look into agriculture. There's so much on the internet about that. I think it's going to change our world. I think it's going to change it in a very impactful way. Agriculture, farming is extremely important for us. Artificial intelligence in business, it's being used all the time in many, many ways. I found that uh, there are about 10 different ways in which artificial intelligence is making an impact and helping business. I'm just going to highlight a few. Uh, generating content, uh, the products you make, making clothing, manufacturing machines, food products. What are you making? How can AI help you do that? How can you market using AI? Advertising. How about selling? Can AI help you to sell your product? Customer service. Um, I talked about a company having a chat bot. You can talk to the company. You can complain about a service. You can ask the, the, uh, the AI chat bot uh, to give you more information about that company without having to pay a human being to do that. AI is used in IT uh, operations in every business for sure. Human resources, hiring people, having to read all kinds of resumes from people who want to work for your company. AI can do that. AI can sort through those resumes, can pick out the kinds of people that, that, who have the, uh, the training and expertise that are right for you. You don't have to read all those Kirk CVs that people submit when they want to find a job. Cybersecurity, protecting your, your company's uh, website. Here in Toronto, the public library system, which is extensive and very, very, very huge and considered one of the greatest in, in the world. Our computer system was hacked. It's impossible to bring a book back to our library because they cannot enter the, the book back into the shelves. Our library is able to move books from one from one location to another. They're not able to use that because the AI system, the uh, the computer system was hacked. Um, they're going to be restoring their their security using artificial intelligence to prevent this from happening again. In law, 
in accounting, of course. We know that computers are so much faster and so much more accurate than people when working with numbers. This was one of the very first uses of computer and, of course, has reached a, a deep, deep uh, capabilities using artificial intelligence. So I'm just going to go through some of these that I've highlighted. Uh, number two, three, four, and uh, sorry, number one, uh, number two, three, four, just a few of these. You know, maybe I'm just, let me just stop for a second here. Are there any questions at this point from anybody? Any questions? I see I've got somebody as Mariana, you have a question. Uh, yeah, hi. Actually, I have two questions. Sure. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, LQ. How can I contact uh, that in, uh, artificial intelligence? And the second one is about the science uh, AI. Because I listened that you said that it's about like life and those kind of I mean, like bacteria and those kind of, of yeah. things. But yeah. my question is if I can include the natural resources, like energy, no, yes, like a difficult things, energy, or yeah. those kind of things, or on science. Absolutely. Anything, any, any connection you can make between the use of artificial intelligence, algorithms, uh, uh, and 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 any any activity, any science, physics, chemistry. I I, I like the life sciences because uh, life sciences implies um, our world, the world in which we live. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, any 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 way you can connect your interest with artificial intelligence and how it can change our world, um, you should definitely include that. As far as LEQ goes, uh, you can find LEQ on the internet. Um, you may be in you may be in a country that that blocks it. I'm not sure, but uh, it's a it's an uh, it's it's it can be searched on the internet. Leq. Okay, thank you. Yeah, like I told you, like science is a a thing that includes a lot of topics. So that's why I I ask you. Yeah, for sure. I included the natural sciences, uh, the, the life sciences, but all science, of course, is being impacted. I don't think there's a physicist, physicist, physician, or a chemist, or an engineer out there who isn't uh, uh, isn't working with artificial intelligence or using it to uh, to to look into the future to make the future better. Uh, I see. There's a, another one came in. Thank you. Uh, going to someone is asking: Is the maintenance of AI going to be a job or a job or is it a job already? Yeah, absolutely. You want to get a job uh, in AI uh, here in Canada, university departments. Uh, across the United States, they are hiring. If you're interested in AI, if you have a can develop a skill, get a degree, uh, you'll you'll have a job for life. Absolutely. Okay, so let me um, if I can go on. Any other questions? I can just, no. Okay, well let's go on. Uh, I was here. Okay, so AI in commerce. Uh, artificial intelligence tools, mach oh, hang on, machine learning algorithms are used by marketing teams every single day. What are they doing? They're analyzing data. They're identifying customer trends. What are people buying? What do people want to buy? What feedback uh, is a company getting from its customers? Um, why, why do you need this data? Well, you want to market, you want to advertise, you want to have, to have the best advertising, you want to advertise with products that people want to buy. You can use AI to develop strategies. Should we make TV commercials? Should we buy posters on the side of the highway? Should we put ads in the newspaper? Should we put uh, ads on, um, on chat, uh, you know, on, on, the, on social media? on internet sites, where where do we put our money? Where are the people that we need to sell to? How can we make the customer experience better? Every company needs to uh, be, be engaged in a conversation with their clients, okay? You, you don't exist without your clients. And AI is in a very effective tool uh, to, to be able to 
Study your clients. What are they buying? When are they buying? Why are they buying? What are they not buying? How can we change that? AI can help you. In addition to improving your marketing, AI can also help you save time. According to a survey from Drift, I believe that Drift is a marketing report, more than 600 marketers, 74% believe that they will be intelligently automating more than a quarter of their tasks in the next five years. So companies are, are looking for AI, for the best kind of AI applications uh, for their business, because business is in business to grow and make profit, of course. Um, there are three areas that I'm just going to focus on a little bit, how AI is going to change, is changing our world now, and, and I think will make it even more uh, exciting in the future. So if you're a business uh, student, you're interested in going into business, many, many, many of the students I taught, uh, that is their number one choice. Sales, what can sale, what can AI do for your sales? Well, it can automate all the things that you do manually, typing, entering, keeping notes, a survey of 7,700 sales professionals from Salesforce found that sales representatives spend an average of uh, uh, less than 30% of their week actually selling. 70% of their time is spent doing other things, not actually selling. And if you're not selling, if your people are not selling, then you're not making money. Much of their time is spent doing manual tasks, entering data, filling out reports, informing the management, sharing updates with the company, okay? Stuff that a computer could easily be tracking. If you're selling, the computer AI could be taking that data in real time and, 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 and distributing it rather than you having to do that as an extra task. Much of their time is spent on manual task data entry, updating. Uh, AI tools can help automate time-consuming tasks so that you, sales representatives, can spend more time doing what they should do, which is selling. Customer service. We've all met this in our, in our daily life. AI-powered chatbots use natural language processing, NLP, and machine learning, ML, to communicate with customers. You may not... You may be talking to a computer when you're asking why your, your package was not delivered or why uh, asking a, a chat bot uh, to give you some advice on the best product to buy. Um, it's able to understand what you're asking. It's able to go through its database and provide you with the right kind of information. It's like talking to a human, but we've all had that experience. Some benefits of using AI for your customer service, it's faster. They don't go to sleep. You can say to your 24 hour seven, you can go online and, and track your package. Talk to one of our representatives uh, 24 seven. They're always available. They're there to help you. They don't get angry. They don't, they're, they, they, uh, they understand what you're saying. They can, um, they can understand um, if, if it's a, if it's a, a, a a verbal exchange, and, and that we're not just talking text. You can have a verbal exchange. They'll understand uh, even if you have an accent when you're speaking. Uh, very, very smart. Um, I did a series, I did a program in my in my television series about natural language understanding. It was very, very early on, but even back in 1986, some of those early programs were able to understand what uh, what people were saying. They were able to translate speech into text, text into speech uh, in quite remarkable ways, but it was very early on. Um, and I, I, 40 years later, I cannot believe how easily I can dictate into my cell phone and, and, have, and have the text come up. Hello, is that somebody wanting to speak? Okay. Um, according to a survey uh, from Dialpad, another, I think, uh, 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 business uh, magazine or big business site, of more than 1,000 customer service professionals, almost 60% of them believe that AI is going to help them work faster and save time. Of course it will. Cybersecurity, according to IBM survey, of 1,000 IT and cybersecurity executives, 64% of respondents have implemented AI 
in their work for enhanced security capability, 29% are evaluating using it. Artificial intelligence and machine learning can be beneficial in cybersecurity to stay ahead of the cyber criminals, automate threats, and respond to any risks. I think we've all heard of companies um, being hacked. They're getting better and better, but artificial intelligence is also getting better and better at uh, uh, stopping these um, these uh, cyber criminals from breaking into uh, into uh, the, the the computers uh, a company's computers. Even governments uh, occasionally will will be impacted. It's happened here in Canada, and I'm sure it's happened in in countries where you live that cyber criminals have gotten into business and have gotten into government information. We're coming to the uh, close of uh, my presentation, so we'll be talking. Uh, be taking some more questions. Here's the fundamental question. Artificial intelligence is seems to be really intelligent. Will they will it ever be able to replace human beings? Activity for activity, function for function. I will submit that it won't. Some people believe that it is. Some of the people who have pioneered artificial intelligence are very concerned that we need to keep a control over artificial intelligence because it might get out of control. It might exceed our expectations. I'm not sure that computers will try and destroy human beings as some, as some, uh, some, some scientists and some thinkers, certainly some writers have been writing about it, a couple of good novels have appeared about computers uh, taking over um, from people and destroying the destroying human beings because they because they feel humans are destroying the planet. In order to save the planet, computers need to destroy people. Uh, that's the basis of a, a couple of books that I've read. But let's look at humans. What do we do? What do we? What are we good at? Human beings. Well, we can respond quite flexibly to new situations. Okay. Yeah, we we do. As we grow older, we get better and better at it through experience. Uh, so we can respond pretty flexibly. Computers do that. Yeah, actually, yes, they can. They can respond pretty pretty flexibly to a new situation, uh, as long as they have been that information has been input. If the if the data is not input, a computer cannot work with data it doesn't have. It cannot be work on situations it has not been trained or approximated. Human beings can make sense of ambiguous and contradictory messages. Think about that for a moment. If you're given a mixed message, you pretty much know as you get older that there's something not quite real, true, doesn't make sense to you. We have that. We have that ability. Computers uh, are getting close to that. I'm not sure that they've achieved that, but I think computers are are getting close and and and, and may be able to reach that point as well. Maybe some of you have a different opinion. That's just my opinion. Humans recognize the relative importance of differences. Humans can find similarities even when there are differences. Humans can draw distinctions between situations despite similarities. In other words, that's the opposite. Okay. There, things are different, but we can see how they can be similar. Computers are not always very uh, efficient at doing that. And when things seem, seem to be the same, we can, we can notice fine distinctions between. But here's... Here's what AI can do or cannot do. AI can, lacks the sensory motor skills involved in human learning. We use a lot of information when we're learning. Uh, all of our senses, our, our hearing, our sense of touch, our sense of taste, our sense of smell. Can a computer smell? Can a computer taste? 
Can a computer touch? Think about that. What of those of those? We know the computer can see; it has vision, right? We know that a computer can speak because we we, we get that all the time. But will would they be able to do the things that humans are uniquely able to do in when they learn through their smell, through their taste, and through their touch? Robots can touch, and do have sensors, so a robot can pick up material very gently or with 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 uh, with uh, with uh, more strength depending on the object beyond uh, what it's been programmed to do so it does have that but can computers smell ai systems lack an understanding of the role that desire and needs play we have emotion will ai ever be able to develop Emotion, feelings, or is it just data driven? People are working on this. People are working on on, on developing the, the a desire, a, a robot sensing when you're lonely. If you go back to that social media, um, uh, LEQ, would Ellie does LEQ realize? know when you're when you're feeling depressed probably not in fact not but leq might evolve as an ai robot to be able to do that and if it does that will that be a benefit to humans currently ai is only able to make predictions and decisions based on the data input okay data in data out we also say garbage in, garbage out. So if garbage falsehoods have been put into AI, an AI application, that false garbage information will come out. So we need to be really careful. Who's putting the data in? What is their motive? Could bad actors input wrong data? Yes, they could. And this is one of the worries of some of the uh, some of the. Uh, uh, um, experts worldwide that uh, bad people uh, will input bad data and develop nefarious uh, malicious algorithms or program computers maliciously. And finally, AI systems cannot apply their knowledge in, in a flexible way to new situations. Okay. Incapable of doing that. Uh, they can only deal with situations they've been trained on, learned on, input on. A whole new situation leaves a computer unable to, to function. But some people believe that computers, AI systems, will learn to learn. My final slide. AI, what are you thinking in in preparing your, your assignment, your, your project? What is your project going to suggest? AI and the future of our world, is it going to be a friend or is AI going to be a foe? Does AI offer promise to solve our problems with the climate change, with food production? Is AI going to be the answer? promise or is it going to be a peril are you afraid do you want to do you want to take a positive attitude or do you want to take a negative attitude in your presentation just going to read this last slide artificial intelligence is poised to transform our world it's already having an impact on learning and education we know that and the economy absolutely in our homes you can ask a computer to play your favorite music. You can ask a computer for the temperature. You can ask you can ask your uh, your your computer to uh, close your doors, open your windows, um, automate your home using a computer. I don't have such a thing. I like to use my 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 brain and my body to to uh, make my house function. But some people prefer to have a computer do all those things for them. Healthcare is impacting our healthcare system. Uh, AI is impacting our healthcare system. Transportation, self-driving cars, agriculture, entertainment. I didn't even talk about how AI 
actors are being created. Uh, if an actor is in a movie and an actor dies, it is possible to create a, uh, a, a robot, an AI avatar, we call it, uh, to complete a movie for the actor who passed away. And you wouldn't know that that was not a real human being, but an avatar. So many areas, law, politics, AI technology can scan legal documents, uh, go through libraries of, of law, case histories, court briefs, going back dozens and dozens of years, something a human being could never do. Just by inputting the right command, AI can search that out for you. It can even determine the tone of a speech uh, and, and news articles. AI can detect fake news, but it can also use that technology to create fake news, to sabotage, to steal, to what we call weaponize. AI can weapon, can become a weapon used against us. It can generate fake media, fake reviews, fake pro and, and propaganda that looks and sounds real, which I am human being speaking to you now, but I could have been an avatar, an AI created Philip Desjardins doing this presentation. I assure you I am real, but I have seen examples of people um, I thought were real, they were avatars, and I could not determine they were not human. All of these things lead to dangerous and malicious outcomes. It may seem like science fiction, but AI technology can be used to save or destroy our world as we know it in so many ways. Are there any uh, 9.30? I have a few extra notes that I have put up on a piece of paper here. I just don't want to throw these questions out at you to think about. Think about natural language translation. Okay. Uh, everything that I have said just now could be translated into, oh, probably 100 languages instantly by artificial intelligence. I, in my television series, uh, saw some of the very first uh, um, experiments, uh, development of uh, translation. It was being done at the University of Montreal, English to French. It was not very accurate, but it was better than anyone else had ever been able to do before, translating from English into the French language and French language into English. It was being developed so that weather reports uh, could be sent across Canada in two languages. They would be written in English and they could be instantly translated. This was text. It was not a, a verbal. It was all done on text. So that was one of the very first examples in 1986 of, of machine translation. Uh, could, could natural language translation allow the people of this world to communicate with each other in real time? Is this a technology that could bring peace to the world so that people can understand each other without the barrier of language? Could it unify the planet and maybe bring an end to the wars that we see because people don't understand each other or uh, uh, they don't communicate well enough with each other? They, they're too quick to pick up their, their guns and their, and their uh, jet fighters and their battleships. Um, is natural language a way to save our world from war? Um, what about starvation, uh, food insecurity? Could AI solve the problems of food insecurity, people who don't have enough food? Is AI developing more efficient food, food that's resistant to, to, uh, to bacteria, food that's resistant to drought, uh, new, new kinds, new strains of, of food? Of course, AI is being used for that. Uh, could AI determine maybe we don't need to grow food in, in ground. Are there other ways of developing food? Can AI test out some new novel ways of producing food in, um, in buildings perhaps, or in, I don't know, in, in some other kind of environment that's not, doesn't put it out there on the ground to be uh, destroyed by drought or destroyed by rain. Um, the climate we know is, uh, is, is our, uh, our friend, but it's uh, becoming our enemy around the world. AI is trying to help us resolve that. 
Can AI create a safe and fully synchronized uh, road system? Self-driving cars, self-driving trucks. Uh, why um, people cause accidents, people drive too quickly, people don't pay attention. If all in the future, all of the automobiles and the uh, vehicles that drive on our highways uh, are AI based, uh, people wouldn't be hit by those cars. Cars wouldn't hit each other. Drunk drivers uh, would be a thing of the past. Um, does AI hold, can AI change our world in that way? Maybe you can think about that. Um, I think that's it. I'm prepared for, for discussion or any questions. Maybe uh, you can throw it up in the chat. I can I can read some of these. So anyone, uh, Evelyn, can you, uh, yes. Okay, hello, I have a question. Uh, as the PPT mentioned, that AI is useful in like marketing. Yes. Like, uh, you we can use AI to analyze data or yep. know the habits of customers, but yes. can we also recognize it as a privacy concern? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I think I think um, anybody involved in commerce would say if you are communicating with a company, if you're you're buying from a company or you're inquiring, asking questions about a product you already are sharing your information. Uh, and that information, you know, is is being is being analyzed by a company. It may very well also be shared. Uh, we know that companies are sharing with each other. Uh, individual companies sell data to marketers. Marketers is marketing people uh, work for lots of companies uh, to help them sell their products. And so, yeah, uh, privacy is a huge issue. Uh, in fact, I, we don't know right now who might be listening in on, on us. Uh, we're called, this, this, this session is called AI in the Future of Our World. Uh, somewhere out there, there may be a, a search going on through the internet for anybody who's talking about AI. Or, and the and the world AI in the world they might be listening in to us we don't have any control over that AI has has able to go through the inter, search the internet like a worm uh, looking for information any and and if, if it triggers uh oh, these people are talking about AI in the future let's let's listen in let's uh, grab data what are they talking about can we use this oh who are all these people oh maybe are they interested in AI hey we should be sending information to them we know where they are we've got their uh we've got their links oh we've got your all your information right now is is public and we need to understand that we're on a computer we we can be seen by anybody who has this the abilities the the algorithms the the hardware to uh to search us out does that okay, answer? thank you sure yeah uh i'm just i am just um Touching the tip of the iceberg, I say uh, in the in this talk today. There's so there's so many things. Uh, where did I get my information from? I spent, I think, about three hours one day on the internet. I went through newspapers uh, for the latest articles about artificial intelligence, and every day there's an article in three newspapers that I read: the New York Times, the Toronto Star and the Globe and Mail, which is a business magazine. Every day I read those papers looking for artificial intelligence and I never go away empty handed. I'm always learning what's going on. So uh, you guys need to do the research uh, through the internet, depending on your topic, your subject, uh, you'll find lots of information that you can use. And next weekend, I'll talk about uh, use of information uh, how you can use it, how, how you, you uh, in your essay and your and in your oral presentation. But uh, every day you should be looking online, researching uh, for AI, what's going on in the area you're interested in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there seem to be one hand raised. Ah, okay. 
So, Dick, and can you put your questions? Um, I have a question. Can I include my research result in the visual artwork, which I can use the real image of to visualize algorithms? Oh, yeah. Uh, an algorithm is a is a recipe. Uh, when I've uh, uh, I'm an English and history teacher. I'm I don't teach AI. I also teach media, but uh, when I talk about algorithm, an algorithm is just a recipe. Uh, it's like uh, making a cake, you know, an algorithm uh, for an algorithm for a, a cake would be flour. I need uh, water. I need butter. I need sugar. Uh, I put it together and I make a cake. So if you could visualize uh, algorithm, uh, that would be great. Just <laughs> I'm giving you a little hint there. Think, think of an algorithm as anything you need to put together to get a result. Inputs and result. A formula, cake. Flour, sugar, eggs, water, stir. You have to have all the instructions. Uh, an algorithm is uh, is a baking, essentially, to come up with a result. So you need content, how that content is to be worked, mixing or or uh, yes, uh, sifting or whatever, pouring. That's uh, the, the, an algorithm works exactly that way. Content what you do with the content to get an outcome. Thank you for your answer. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, how many of you listening to me now are uh, interested in, in, study, in going further in your studies in business? How many of you are business uh, oriented? Anybody? Just put your hand up if you are. I'm, I'm, usually, more than fifty percent of students are uh, w w will be studying business when they go to university or college. What about uh, natural sciences? How many of you are uh, in the life sciences? We call it natural science, life sciences. Oh, okay, Julian. Okay, how many of you are engineers? Are going to be engineer, computer programming, engineering, AI? Usually there's uh, often a, a, quite a number of students who come to Canada to study. They come for two things, business, engineering. Yeah, most of my students. Occasionally one will be interested in law, art, for sure. How many of you are thinking about doing an art project rather than a, writing an essay? Anybody? Hands up. Still thinking? Yeah, okay. So um, anybody else who has any question for? Yeah. We have um, we have over 12 countries going, well, over 12 countries will be represented in the competition. And uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm, we don't know how many, but uh, you know, who knows how many students will come. It'd be nice if we had a hundred. Uh, don't forget, we have two categories. So the younger students will not be competing with the older ones. Uh, you'll be kept separate. But yeah, Julian, you have a question. Um, yeah, so I've got a few ideas on different subjects, like construction, education, medicine, vehicles, a lot, you know? Yeah. And do I have to pick just one subject or can I do many? No, no. How The question is, how will AI change the world? Yeah, AI and the, and the future of the world. So if the future of the world you think will be impacted by AI in construction and medicine, that's your essay. You got it. Yeah, yeah. If you can contain it within 500 words. Okay, thank you. Yeah. One of the, um, one I'm, I'm quite interested in transportation. My next car will be an electric car in Canada. Uh, we're going to stop making uh, fuel cells, uh, cars, uh, fuel fuel driven cars. Uh, every car will will be an electric car. I believe it's twenty thirty five, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm already I buy mine before that. Um, one of the uh, 
one of the places I went for my TV show was uh, to Detroit, Michigan, to the to the uh, unit to the General Motors plant. General Motors was the first company to start thinking about how to use artificial intelligence in cars, not to drive them, but to fix them. And they, we saw uh, a computer built into a car, a model car, and the all the technicians had to do was plug in the computer into a, a, a box that would analyze everything in that car. That car was programmed for its fuel, for its engine function, for its brakes, all the major functions of a car. Uh, what, all, the, all how that was working was being fed into a computer in the car under the hood. And then there was an output and the technician who was a scientist uh, plugged it into his big computer and it, all that data was pouring out. And it was amazing to see that uh, that car had a dirty uh, spark plug. It wasn't working properly because it had dirty spark plugs and the computer nailed it. The computer showed it all its analysis and boom, dirty spark plug. They took it out, cleaned the spark plug and the engine started up again. It was, we have it on tape. It was incredible to see that now every car has computer in it. My, my computer stops my car when I come to a red light, the engine shuts off. It starts up again, it's computer doing that. So cars have computers, as you know, which is why it's so expensive to fix them. You have to take them to the garage because they've all got computers. Uh, and General Motors in 1985 was the first company to say, that's the future. Yeah, Mariana, you have a question. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, I have another question. I don't know if the answer is too obvious, but I want to solve it. Sure. Question is what? Okay, we lost her. Oh, there she is. Hi. Uh, are you listening to me well? Yeah, you're in Colombia. So, Mariana, you have a question? No? Yeah, uh, I'm have, um, I have a question. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if the answer is too obvious, but I want to solve it. Um, the question is about... For example, if I want to do an essay, um, I have to do it. I can do it like with ChatGPT or uh, artificial <laughs> uh, intelligence. Or for example, if I want to do an art, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. But if I want to do an art or something like that, yeah. uh, it, it takes an app that is called Dalidos. Yes. And I don't know if I can do it like like that. I love Dali. Yeah, Dali is a great Dali. If no one, um, I didn't talk. I didn't talk about art, but Dali will make a picture based on your input. The the data, the data you give it, uh, it will create four versions of of a painting, a drawing, whatever you ask it to do. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't know it wasn't yours. Uh, Chat GBT. Um, we asked ChatGPT to write your essay. How would we know? Well, we can know. <laughs> Chat, uh, you probably know there's now software available to teachers uh, that can determine whether something was written ChatGPT. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a plagiarism check. So uh, would you use ChatGPT to get your data? Absolutely. I did. I use ChatGPT uh, uh, to create many things, many resources when I teach. Uh, I don't rely on it, and some of it's not right. ChatGPT can, can make mistakes, and it often does. But uh, it's a good starting point, and you should be using the technology. That's why we're talking about it. It's not to be feared; it's to be used. So use ChatGPT, uh, but don't submit uh, your essay as a ChatGPT essay. Uh, we'll know that. Yeah, it'll be it'll be checked. Fong. Okay, thank you. That was my question. Sure. Uh, yeah, Fong. Oh, hi, um, I have a question. Hi. So uh, what are the criteria for a good essay relevant to business? <laughs> the criteria for a good essay. <laughs> oh, clarity, uh, information, <laughs> grammar should be correct, of course. The basics, the ba it should, it should, it's written in English. The grammar should be correct. You should read it. 
Uh, let me, one of the things I'll say next weekend, after you finish writing an essay, if you do an essay, please read it out loud. Read an essay out loud. Never submit something in writing that you didn't read out loud. Why? When we write, we use our eyes and we use our touch. When we, if we just read what we have on our computer, we use our eyes. Why would you only use your eyes to look for mistakes when you have ears and a mouth? Why? Because if you read it out loud, your ears will hear mistakes. Your mouth will speak mistakes. Your eyes will see mistakes. You're using three modalities, three senses. Um, I, I, I do a lot of teaching about essays. It's one of my, um, it's one of my interests is, is how to write a good essay, a good essay format. And I have charts and things like that. But whenever I read a bad essay, it's got words repeated. It doesn't make sense. I ask the student to read that out loud. They'll say, oh, yeah, something's wrong, teacher. I said, yeah, yeah, you didn't read it out loud. Read your, read your work out loud, all your work. Read out. I even read my texts out loud. I never send a text to anybody without reading it out loud. If I'm in public, I read it quietly, but because my ears will hear mistakes. Uh, so what is a good essay? Grammar, correct. It's 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 structured well. It it comes in with a with a, a a a strong what we call a hook, something that gets my attention, and builds there logically, and has a really nice conclusion and leaves me. Uh, when I read your essay, I'll know how you feel. You think that AI is 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 holds promise for the future, or you think AI holds peril for the future, you made it clear and you gave good examples. That makes a good essay. Okay, uh, Dick Ann, can you raise your question? Um, this time I have three questions. Three. One is, as you say, as you say that if AI have emotion or not, is something that we do, didn't know. Yeah. So I'm very concerned with it with a moral aspect of it when applying it to laws and politics. Yeah, absolutely. So you're concerned with the moral uh, aspects of AI and its ability to maybe be, develop emotions. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So you'll want to, if that's your concern, you you definitely want to go and, and, and research people who are talking about that. Some of the early pioneers of artificial intelligence, I mean, people back in the 80s who were, how do we how do we get a computer to think the way we do? How do we get a computer to analyze and, and um, uh, use rules? Um, one of the basic rules of computer programming is, if this happens, then you do this. That's that's the foundation of a computer, uh, of artificial intelligence. If if this if you see this, if this is presented, then that this is the result, and there's variations on that, and that all leads to what we call a, a learning tree. Or uh, if this, then that. If that, then this. Then this, then that. And a computer very quickly goes through all these. If if this, then if then. It's called heuristics, and it's the basic. And the people who came up with this theory, this is how we think. If we face this situation, then we should do this. If we read that, then we should react this way uh and so uh the people some of those some of those people are writing and talking a lot getting together and sharing knowledge they are really concerned that uh that things are moving so quickly with artificial intelligence that machines are learning so appear to be learning from the data they have uh that how do we control that and who controls that who has the can politicians take misinformation? Absolutely. Are they doing it? Absolutely. It's happening in the United States right now. It's happening in the United States. There's a lot of false information and false video that's been put together uh, using artificial intelligence and just being distributed worldwide. So you're, you're, you're right to be worried about the moral and the uh, implications of artificial intelligence. Many people are. You said you had three questions. Is there another one? Yeah. Um, the second one is, 
when I can I include quite sensitive content like the use of AI in politics, such as the um, upcoming U.S. president election? Yeah. You should use anything that, that supports your theory, right? Definitely. Uh, many people are concerned about politics and, and how artificial intelligence uh, is being used to develop propaganda, to put false information out there, to block people. Yeah, you need, you know, if you want to talk about that, you, you want to support it with good examples. And I think uh, there are lots of examples all around the world. Before we had artificial intelligence to do this, we had uh, um, people, uh, you know, putting posters out, manipulating photographs, uh, using old technology during the communist, uh, the rise of communism, 19, uh, the Russian, after the Russian revolution, there were photographs of people removed uh, from photographs historic photographs, and you wouldn't know they were taken out because it was possible to do back, even back in 1917 to, to alter a photograph and, and remove people that like they never existed, political opponents. This was Stalin removed political opponents from photographs so that only he was appeared in them. So those other people ceased to exist and people never never saw them ever again. So the third question. Uh, and the third question is still relating to the subject of law and politics. Yeah. Um. So the way AI works, as far as I'm concerned, is you put input inside them and the algorithm's going to produce the answer that you want. So yeah. when it related to law and politics, I want, I'm, I'm really questioned by the topic that if the algorithm's let the AI to think as a human or just like think this yeah. person commits something and what laws do does he or she break? Well, uh, if we're talking about law, uh, law, uh, law and trials are based on press, what's called precedent. So a lawyer goes in to a court with a client who's done a crime and that lawyer uses other laws, other cases to try and get his client, you know, freed. Uh, it's called precedent. So uh, it's very hard. A judge, a judge needs to look at other laws, other times, other trials going back as far. Law offices are full of books. Every month, I think there's a, a books are published for lawyers with all the major cases that came up that might affect the law in the future. So searching, lawyers spend a lot of time searching through books. When was the last time something happened where a man did something like my client? Uh, oh, that judge let him go free because of this. I'm gonna use that same law uh, to get my client to go free. There's lots of time spent researching uh, old cases, old examples. Donald Trump is using that now. Donald Trump keeps talking about, well, this president was let go. And he didn't go to jail, that president, you know, so I I should be treated the same way. Uh, so Donald Trump has done research, too. Um, so law, uh, a lo there was a lawyer who used chat GPT to uh, to to create to to search a bunch of cases. He went to court. The judge looked at it and said that case never happened. Where did you find that case? It doesn't exist in the books. And we found out that lawyer, that ChatGPT made it up. ChatGPT invented a case uh, and put it into the, uh, the the document. And that lawyer took that to court. It made a lot of people uh, think about the dangers of ChatGPT. So I think that's all I can say. I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't have much knowledge of politics and law in, in terms of AI, but I know that chat GPT and researching is a big is a big part of what AI can do. Okay, so uh, we are almost there. It's almost 10 a.m. in Toronto. So the last question, uh, Anna asked in the chess box. Oh, okay. Uh, could I know which black form that we can use to check for pleasures? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, 
I can't give that to you. <laughs> it's available. You can search that. It's a chart that. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, we have many, many, many ways of searching a student, what a student writes. Uh, lots of different uh, applications that are getting better and better. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it goes without saying. You should all know that anything you submit is going to be checked for plagiarism. Yeah, yeah, everything. So will be will be checked for plagiarism, uh, not by me, uh, but you'll see me at the competition. I will be the MC. Uh, uh, the days of the con, you'll see me again, and you'll see me next Saturday when I'll come back. I'll have a I'll have a, a few powerpoints, but we'll go through present uh, how to how to how to present a really good essay. Just keep think, keep in mind. And some examples of how you could uh, uh, present a um, an artwork, and some presentation skills. Okay, so a good a make, you want to make a good impression when you make your presentation to the judges. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Phil Desiden. So uh, it uh, ten a.m. here, and then uh, we have already, you know. Uh, completed all the uh, PPT slide and uh, uh, Mr. Desiden already answered all your questions, you know, at a, you know, uh, certifying level. So we will see you again um, next Friday, the same time. And then we will send you the reminder through your email. And next week, uh, master class, which is a master workshop, the topic is about uh, how to improve your writing skills and uh, how to uh, have a really good presentation, um, you know, on Zoom. And uh, we really want to uh, have you all here again. And you can invite your friend who haven't signed up for the competition. They can do it now and they can also join us. If they don't want to join the competition, they can also participate on the master workshop so that they can have some you know, experience and some tips to improve their writing and their, their presentation skills. So thank you and see you next time. Also from 8.30 until 10 a.m. Uh, EST, then check your time difference and then join us next time. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.